uniques oftentimes change builds in very fundamental or unique ways and that's always been the case in the diablo games and certainly will be no different when diablo 4 launches in june uniques fundamentally break down into two different types on the one side you have non-class specific uniques which don't focus on any particular skills can be used by any of the classes and offer what i would consider more general buffs and general bonuses to that class and then on the other side of the spectrum, you have class specific uniques, which augment skills and specific playstyles in a very certain way and essentially allow you to add a very unique flavor to that class. Now, a bunch of these unique items have already been leaked by Blizzard, but also a huge amount of them have been data mined. Now, whether this is the full list of items that we can expect when the game goes live in June, we will only know that once we actually have the game in our hands. However, I've been making a series of videos looking at first of all the non-class specific uniques but then also covering per class each of them and today is the druid's turn to shine starting our list out here we have great staff of the crone which is a unique staff in this tooltip here damage to crowd controlled enemies is mentioned twice in the first and the third position but we also have damage to close enemies and non-physical damage and ranks to claw now the aspect here mentions that claw is now a storm skill and also cast storm strike which is of course a basic skill at a 120 to 150 percent normal damage now this is something i would i would consider a trend that we're going to see with the druid you actually see it in some of the other legendary aspects which we've also been privy to and that is that essentially the werewolf is considered the dps you know transform and the werebear is considered the sort of like tanky transform and therefore also your storm and lightning skills are considered dps skills whereas your earth skills are more considered like tanky skills or defensive skills because they cc the enemies so much so this kind of like plays into that identity and i think once we get to mid to late game druid most likely builds will revolve either against you know around rather locking yourself into a particular form and then getting as many benefits on that as possible so either being a werewolf or being a werebear and then there'll also just be like a general spell cast at druid which i think will sort of leading into other things but this very much this item sort of like flavors itself into that and uh, i think it's pretty dope that you now essentially boil two skills onto one here where claw now does the same thing as storm strike and you get the benefit essentially of both of them so pretty cool item overall i like it next up we have hunter's zenith which is a unique ring this comes with lightning resistance and poison resistance right off the rip and then we have damage while shapeshifted so as long as you are in either a werewolf or werebear form critical strike damage when you're in werewolf overpower damage while you're in werebear and then giving you ranks to quick shift now the aspect here mentions that you gain a bonus when you kill with shift shaping skill werewolf your next non-ultimate werebear skill costs no resource and has no cooldown werebear your next werewolf skill will heal you for a number or a percentage i'm guessing it's just a number when damage is first dealt this aspect obviously embraces a playstyle where you don't confine yourself to one shape shift only but that you use whichever one of the werewolf or werebear depending on the situation using the werewolf when you want to heal yourself and using the werebear when you want to get some free cast essentially because you have no resource cost on your skills so in the examples that i made before where i said confining yourself to either being a werewolf or a werebear or a caster this essentially means that this item will reward someone who plays it a little bit different and actually embraces all of the different forms of the druid last thing it would have been pretty cool if there was also like a bonus here for just being in normal druid phone uh, form because that would have been then your you have a bonus for druid form when you're just shooting stuff with spells you have something for werebear and you have something for werewolf i think that would have been even cooler so uh, that would have made me really really like this where now this is just you know it's it's okay then in our third slot here we have insatiable fury which is a unique chest armor this rolls with physical damage overpower damage damage reduction while fortified and armor while in werebear form this is a tanky item the aspect on here says that werebear form is now your true form in other words whenever you're not doing anything you're not casting anything like that you actually stay in werebear form 
this is this is a lot different to the way that the druid is normally because of course the druid normally changes into the form of whichever skill they're using and then after a you know the skill has completed it reverts back to base druid form this means your base druid form now is werebear instead of normal druid and you gain plus two ranks to all of your werebear skills so if you are heavily leaning into bear mode druid like tanky druid stacking fortify all of that you're basically building a bear tank then this will be a good item exactly for that because you're just getting a whole bunch like if all six of your skills on your bar are werebear skills i mean there's practically no reason to really do that but even if half of your skills are that that's six extra ranks that you just get from this aspect and that's also not bad at all fourth item here is mad wolf's glee and this uh, is also a unique chest armor this is pretty much the exact let's say partner to the previous one we looked at this only focuses on werewolf so this rolls with physical damage poison damage which is a big thing for the werewolf there's a lot of skills with the werewolf that cause poison damage damage reduction from poison enemies and movement speed werewolf is also uh, uh the the opposite of werebear where werebear is more tanky and slow and more you know like that you have essentially the the werewolf being like the dps class being the rogue being sort of like the fast class this says that this werewolf is now your true form of course on the aspect and you gain plus two ranks to all your werewolf skills so both of these two for whenever you want to be more a werebear or be more a werewolf uh, take your pick then we have storm's companion and this is a unique pants this says that your potion also briefly grants movement speed i like this i saw this on i think one of the non-class specific items as well i like ways in which that you can basically get free movement speed from doing something uh it, it has multiple uses it can get you onto an enemy faster it can get you out of shit quicker i really like it then we also have companion skill damage companion movement speed potion drop chance and ranks to wolves now, before we get to the aspect here, with the most recent after beta 2 patch announcement, one of the things that Blizzard looked at was augmenting and increasing the damage profile of the companions for the Druid, since players found this to be, and I'm sure that they themselves, Blizzard in testing it, found it to be, let's say, underwhelming compared to something like the Necromancer. So... I certainly think it's possible that druid can be a pet class can be pet viable and uh, this item certainly leans into that now the aspect here says that your wolf companions are infused with the power of the storm so lightning fucking wolves dealing lightning damage and gaining the storm howl ability so if you are planning on running pet druid so let's say for argument's sake you're gonna go wolves and vine creeper this is a good way for you to get like a lot of additional dps uh, and an element onto your wolves and it's probably going to make your wolves pretty you know pretty nasty so i really like this i i think you know uh probably pet druid might be like a niche build but uh, i'm interested to give it a try i think druid might walk away from the diablo 4 experience as being potentially the most underjudged or let's say underused class but then coming up with some of like the more let's say surprise builds and you know really really good tech so that's at least what i hope for the druid because it'll be a cool little you know story but then we have tempest raw which is the unique helm here that has damage while shapeshifted poison resistance maximum spirit and life on kill this aspect here also features the lucky hit mechanic meaning you have your skill your skill procs a lucky hit there's a percentage of lucky hit chance on each skill and then this says that storm skills have a 15 to 25 percent chance to grant 10 spirit your base storm skills are now also werewolf skills so again leaning into what i said at the beginning when we started talking about these druid uniques is that the identity here is that generally storm and lightning skills are considered the werewolf path the dps path and this now says that whenever you lucky hit with one of those skills there's a if you get the best version of this item the 25 percent is a one in four chance um, of it essentially giving you 10 spirit now I think the druid might be the class that is the most main resource hungry a lot of their really powerful skills uh example being landslide uh, uses a huge amount of this resource i mean don't get me wrong these skills hit like mac fucking trucks but they take a lot of resources to cast them so in a case of you playing a caster build a caster druid you're going to be looking at ways of increasing the size of your spirit pool but then also in ways of like refilling that pool as soon as possible and this essentially gets you 
a aspect that kind of like works towards that now it also says your base storm skills are also considered werewolf skills and so therefore it means that any benefits that you have to storm skills will now also benefit those skills and so on so it's a way for you to essentially double dip then we have Vasili's Prayer, which is a unique helm. This is damage while shapeshifted. And you're going to notice a trend here because this is exactly the same item as the previous one we looked at. Now just focusing, of course, on Webe. So this has lightning resistance, maximum life, and spirit on kill. And this says your earth skills are now also Webe skills and fortify you for X. Now, between these two items, I personally think Vasili's Prayer is probably the the better one i i would i would be more excited to get vasili's prayer than i would to get tempest raw and it's because i think that when we get to the late game when we get to world tier 3 world tier 4 when our content is more difficult and actually more difficult for us to survive it's going to be important that you have ways in which you can stack barriers stack shields stack fortify and all of that and this gives you a very very direct route to that so i really do I, I i like this i think i think the earth skills are don't get me wrong again i like hurricane i like some of the, the the lightning and storm skills that we have on on the druid but i think the earth skills are where it's at because they just offer so much cc as well they stun and all of that so and they just hit really 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 hard so yeah our last item for the druid is waxing gibbous which is a unique one-handed axe and this has damage to healthy enemies, critical strike damage, damage to injured enemies, life on kill, and ranks to shred. Now, this very much seems like a DPS, uh, let, let's say, item here. And if we look at the aspect, it further on feeds into that saying that you gain stealth for two seconds when killing enemies with shred. Breaking stealth with an attack grants ambush, which guarantees critical strikes for 1 to 2.5 seconds. Now... I, I've looked at this in each one of the classes that we've looked at so far. Well, I mean, we've looked at Barbarian so far and the non-class uh, by the time I'm creating this video right now. And a point that I've been making is that a lot of the times when we look at these, we think about just, you know, Diablo as a whole. We're attacking monsters, we're fighting bosses and that sort of thing. But we also do have to remember that this game will have PvP. And while this is something that we haven't been able to experiment with all that much, we haven't seen a lot of footage about it, anything like that, the bottom line is that if pvp becomes a thing is a real thing is not like you know a fucking meme and it's not just about whoever presses the button first to dumpster the next guy and you know like one hit fucking you know wonders all day then pvp will require you to invest in ways that you can cc enemies that you can escape the cc of enemies and that you can capitalize on moments like stealth ambushing uh stunning someone and dealing damage to them and catching up to them this item actually does that because it gives a mechanic to the druid that they wouldn't have access to otherwise which is of course like stealth and then an ambush from stealth so i really really like this uh, it makes sense that this would focus on you know more of the the the, the werewolf side of it really and uh, the fact that this has damage to healthy enemies and damage to injured enemies on it also means that it's a case of you know you deal a lot of more you deal more damage to an enemy that's full life so when you start off this whole thing and then also when they start running away from you because you're winning the fight then you're also dealing more damage to them now that doesn't mean that i'm saying that this is a shitty pve item i'm just saying that it certainly has some pvp you know application and something that we could potentially look at as a slot item for when we start messing around in the fields of hatred and that's the list of items for the druid i feel like i still want to give my boy the barbarian the props i really liked a lot of the uniques that we saw there if you haven't seen that video yet go ahead and check it out but um i do think like the, again I, i'll say this in two different parts in the video so i can definitely get that message out i think the druid might end up being the biggest surprise out of all of the classes i think a lot of people are expecting great things from the barbarian expecting great things from the rogue expecting great things from the sorcerer but uh a lot of people are you're kind of like shitting on the druid it's kind of like become like a meme um i think the druid might end up being being a big surprise in terms of like how good it will be at certain things uh druid might potentially be the safest class for you to run you know um hardcore mode with that could definitely be a thing but uh something else that i have to mention before i let you go is that i am doing a giveaway a diablo 4 giveaway to be specific on this channel at the moment there's a video that I posted uh, a little while back. It looks like this. And in there, I detail how you can win, well, potentially win one 
of three copies of Diablo 4, the base version of the game on the platform of your choice. Now, to be able to have a chance to win one of those, simply follow the instructions in the video. It's a short Google form that you have to fill in, and then you are in the draw. And on the 1st of June, live on a stream on this channel, I will be drawing the three winners, and I sincerely hope you can be one of them. Other than that, I also just sincerely hope you have a fantastic morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you are in the world. Until next video, fucking cheers.